that. They're 60 years old and they're sitting over there. Somebody stomped my toe, so they're pouting. And you're like, what is wrong with you? Them, what wow. happened at 16? Wow. And they go, well, this, 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 and this. And I said, okay, so you need to forgive everybody associated with that. And so that's why it's so important to move past that so that you can grow. In age, you matured, you but mentally, mentally. Mm -hmm. you are still stuck. Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationship from, from surviving, surviving to thriving. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified when we upload a video every week. Today on TMC, we have Cassandra Williams with Built to Last. It's an honor to be here with you all. I am Coach Williams, Cassandra Williams of Cassandra Williams Enterprise, and I am the founder of Wise Wives Build. And what I do is I help ladies embrace who they are, develop the skills they were naturally born with, as well as I help them gather tools, tips, and techniques to build the life of their dreams and be able to live in that place. I believe that you truly can have it. Oh. Mm, wow. I love that. I love that. So Cassandra, tell us what prompted you to start Wise Wives Build? I was riding to a vendor event and the scripture came up of a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish one tears it down with her hand. And, you know, I was just like, oh my gosh, that's really weird. But as I began to really think about it, I had come out of a season where I was looking for something. Mm. and couldn't find it. As a wife, there was a season that I went through in my marriage where I didn't fit into couples ministry. I couldn't go to the singles ministry because I wasn't single. The <laughs> women's ministry was just a mixture and I had no place where someone just understood what I was going through as a wife. Or someone to say, girl, get, get your life. Or <laughs> to say, look, I understand, just keep going through. And I had to build what I didn't have during that season. It was a mandate, mm -hmm. build a safe space for wives to come in and have real authentic conversations about what is really going on. Because many of us, you know, we get over the fact of fairy tales aren't really true. <laughs> <laughs> and we were prepared for the wedding day, but not necessarily the lifetime of marriage. Mm -hmm. And there was no, there was not a lot of places where they were talking and we could have real authentic conversations. And so there was a mandate for me to build that space for the women and gather them to just be able to say, look, this is what I'm going through. Because sometimes all you need to hear is me too. Mm -hmm. I get it. You're not crazy and you're not alone. And you have to, and that gives you the strength to carry on. So that's how Wise Wives Build came about. Wow. That's awesome. Tell us one thing that you wish you would have known before you got married? One thing I wish I had known. For me, it was the importance of communication. And what I mean by communication, not just talking to one another, but the art of communication where you listen to understand. Mm -hmm. I was listening to respond. I was listening to get my point across. Yeah, I was listening yes. to be like, okay, when can I jump in here right now to defend myself? Yeah. Because I brought in baggage. I brought in some luggage my husband didn't see. Mm. And so I felt like I always had to defend myself. And so I wish someone had set me down to say, baby, look, listen, mm. sometimes you just got to sit there and you're going to have to take it for a later date. <laughs> Wow, that's good. That's good. You just said something. You said, I brought some baggage that my husband did not see. And just in your field of work and the women that you've worked with, how often do you believe that happens? And what challenges can that present in the marriage, bringing in that baggage that the spouse is not aware of? It's, it's very high. I would say eight out of 10. I don't want to say 10 out of 10 because there's always going to be that one. But um, many of us did not do our own personal work before we got married. And what, what I mean by work is we didn't deal with 
our abandonment issues. We didn't deal with rejection. We didn't deal with our own insecurity. We pushed through it. We buried it. We did all of these things, but we didn't deal with it. We didn't face it. And so once you get married and he starts pushing certain buttons, it automatically comes out. It's like a knee jerk reaction that happens. And you're like, what in the world happens? Yeah. And if you don't have someone that's able to help you navigate, you'll feel like, oh my God, I married the wrong man. This is not what I signed up for when it was really you <laughs> and not him. That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. Us as men, I mean, we have we have our own set of issues too, you know, anger, different things. But in that relationship, you know, sometimes, you know, we can get in, in a season where we're taking it personal and we're really thinking it's about us when it's really not. It's about the individual. What, what are some of the things that a husband and a wife can do to get through those times or to help their spouse through those seasons? But going back to that listening aspect, sometimes you have to understand that you may have to give up a battle to win the war. Mm -hmm. And so you may have to give up your right to be right mm -hmm. in this one conversation because it's a bigger, it's a bigger war that's being fought. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I, I believe that in marriage, in relationships in general, that there's a spiritual side and a natural side. And sometimes we get so caught up in the natural side that we miss the spiritual. Mm -hmm. So you will start fighting each other and there's an enemy standing in the corner just watching y'all go at it. Wow. And he's like, they are not even paying attention, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's one of the things I try to help people see is, yes, naturally there's some things going on, but spiritually what's going on as well, because if you don't attack that spiritual aspect of it as well, it's going to keep coming back because the enemy, there's no, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. So if it keeps working, he's going to keep working it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to keep having that same cycle over and over again because it's working. And so we have to identify what are the cycles that are going on. We have to listen to one another. And then you may have to give up your right for somebody else's wrong. Yeah. Just that one battle, because that one battle could make you win the war. And it's ultimately, we're fighting for a soul and we're fighting for our marriage. One of the things I had to pray in my marriage was, Father, give me thick skin. Because mm. I was the queen of taking it personal. Yeah. I was like, listen, and I was ready to, you know, fight. I'm a fighter by nature. You know, yeah. I'm going to defend me. And I finally had to get to a season and be like, God, is, is this? Ask the question, is this, is this me? Mm. Is, is what they're saying true? And if God is like, no, this isn't about you then you say, look, okay, give me thick skin so that I won't take these punches personally. I, I, I like the way you said that <laughs> because you said, you, you said, is this me? And I, I believe that's a great that's question. That's exactly what yeah, I wrote it's down. It's really a great question to ask because, you know, a lot of times looking at- We look at know, the other person. Yeah. We look at the other person. And a lot of times it's easy, even in, you know, in marriage, it's easy for me to look at it and say, Absolutely. oh, it's Cedric's fault. He yeah. did this, he did that, yeah. or he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Or, you know, he, uh, why is he saying that? Why is he doing this or whatever? So let me, let me ask you this question. So, okay, this, this is a great question. It's a great start. Great start saying, is it, is this me? Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at yourself and say, you know what? Wow. I have baggage and looking at your baggage. So once you realize you have that baggage, what do you do with it? What's next? Mm. You've got to be willing to mm. unpack it <laughs> mm. because you can know it's an issue and just be like, I'm not going to touch it. Uh, you know, how many times have you walked past something in your house and you look at it and you walk past it every day, but you're not willing to move it. You're mm. not willing to. And so you have to be willing to unpack it. You have to be willing to go back to that eight-year-old, that six-year-old, that, you know, whatever, wherever it happened, because there's a part of you that's stuck mm -hmm. and, it, and it touches every area of your life. Because many people feel like for me personally, I did not have a good relationship with my father, my biological father. I had an amazing stepdad, amazing family, but that relationship, because it was so what it was the abandonment issues, the rejection, and because I didn't have answers. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the answers. Yeah. And so I formed this whole story in my head. 
Mm. I was 35 before I got the truth, wow. before I asked him the right questions. <laughs> and he said, I never would have come to you. Had I never opened the door, he would have never come to me. And once I got it, literally, I had to learn how to live differently because that rejection, that abandonment, it fueled me to be an overachiever. I excelled. I was like a go-getter. Yeah. And so here I was, this woman that was going to school full time, working full time, being a foster mom. And I realized I can't do all this because now the burden had been lifted. I had unpacked my bags wow. and I didn't have that power under me anymore. Yeah. And I was like, wait, I got to learn to live a whole different kind of life. On the flip side of that coin, that's where you find people going to addictions. Mm -hmm. whether it be drugs, whether it be sex, whether it be, you know, going in and out or having relationship issues to where they're like, look, I am never making inner vows. I will never feel like this again. Go, and now you got to go back and get that. Then allow yourself to grow forward. Right. And, and you said something because you, you mentioned some sex, uh, alcohol and things like that. But I'm listening to you. It sounds like you had a work addiction. It was a certain point in my life for the same thing. It's like busy, 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 busy. And I realized that business was just a coping mechanism to keep me from dealing with the issue because it's like, if I have any moments to myself, now I have to deal I with myself deal with and it. I didn't want to deal with it. I mean, mm -hmm. so man, this is, this is, this is good. It this is. is. Good. It is. And I, I love that because the thing about it is I think because of what society tells us, we always look for it in the form of a negative addiction. Yeah. And you think that somebody being a go-getter and doing five things at one time, school, work, parenting, this, this, that, you think, oh, that's good, she a go-getter, but not realizing that what it's doing is, is founded in something else that is not so good. So then that person begins to be overwhelmed physically, mentally, emotionally, in other ways. And then that shows up in your marriage and your relationship with your parenting and all of that because of the baggage that wasn't unpacked. Mm -hmm. But once you, and when you said that, I was like, that is it. Because it's one thing to know that you have the baggage, but it's something completely different to decide that I'm going to unpack it. Meaning, you know, I think about when we come back from vacation, sometimes that suitcase goes at the end of the bed and I'm now trying to grab underwear out of there because I don't want to unpack it. Yeah. But eventually you have to unpack it to put everything back where it goes or else you stumping your toe in the middle of the night because now this suitcase is at the end of the bed. So when I think about that in the emotional sense of us not unpacking baggage, it's what kind of things it can do to show up different things in our life, whether it's negative as far as society or whether it seems to be positive, but can turn out to be negative in the long run. Yeah. One of the things I see a lot is people will go so far, even with their careers. And that here comes this big, you've been preparing for it. They offer you the promotion and you're afraid to take it hmm. mm. and they don't understand why. And you have to go all the way back. And then you find something that has been swept under the rug wow. or hidden in their heart, locked away. They don't even know it's there anymore. They don't even realize that it's rooted mm. in something deeper. Mm. They're just continuously putting a Band-Aid on it. Mm. And so we have to stop putting Band-Aids on the wounds and allow them to heal. Oh, wow, wow. They heal from the inside out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of us, some of us have that opportunity. I even I had uh, dad issues. And before my dad passed away, I had an opportunity to reconcile and to kind of figure out, you know, really, my issues, the issues I had with him was because of the issues that he had with his dad, you know, and I, once I realized that I mean, it took the weight off, I mean, the person taking it personal all those years, it, but the thing about it, I had an opportunity to reconcile with him before he passed. What would you recommend to someone that they may not have that opportunity to reconcile mm -hmm. before, before the offender passed away? I don't say this as being crass or anything, but this is one of the things that I have to tell myself. You will never get a graveyard apology. Mm. You holding on to something from someone that has passed on you're never going to get that apology. They right. can't talk. Mm -hmm. So you've got to figure out how you can move forward. And one of the things I like to do is I like to go through the, just look through the bloodline, just start going through 
What did they go through? How old were they? I was literally sitting at my father's funeral and I was listening to them talk about this man. And I'm like, I don't know him like that. <laughs> but it took me to, to be that to that day. We were good. We were in a good place. But I realized everybody was talking about a man. I was born to a 16 year old boy. Uh, what did I expect? Uh, I had accepted that my mom was a teenage mom. She was 14. I had never looked at him as a 16 year old boy before. Uh, that's good. And it gave me a different concept. And so I encourage people that when you can't get, when you can't have those conversations, and sometimes it's not meant to have a conversation the way I did it, I wrote a letter to my dad. And I said, look, let me just say this. I don't want anything from you, but I just need to tell you how I felt. And you have a grandson. Yeah. And I had to take back a vow that I had made because oh. I had said he would never see him. Wow. And I had to take wow. it back. And I said, you can be a grandfather to him. He was like, oh my God. And it just opened up a door, mm -hmm. but it brought so much healing between me and my sister. I had, a, I had a biological sister with him that we didn't really have a relationship and when I opened the door, it just brought so much healing, but I had to do it for me. It was not for him. And that's what I want your, the listeners to understand. It's not for them. Yeah. It's for you to be able to move forward and to be able to truly live the best life, not feeling like, oh, I got to be all of this because I got to prove to them that they missed out mm -hmm. or I don't want to be this person. So I'm trying to be the, just you get you release yourself so that you can just be absolutely absolutely that's good, that's good. That's you just i mean when you said that i i could feel that i could feel that you said just heal let go of all of that so that you can just be and the truth of the matter is i know that there's someone that's going to be listening and there's many of us that are where it we find ourselves in that phase where we're trying to prove to them that they missed out because they walked away. Yeah. We're trying to prove to them that we're good enough because they didn't stay. Whatever it is, we're we're trying to, mm. or we're trying to show the world that we we deserve an opportunity. Look at me, whatever it is, but to allow yourself that space to yeah. heal and just be. And we know that forgiveness is not for the other person, it's for us. It releases it, you releasing them from a debt is not saying they didn't do it. They wasn't wrong. We're not saying any of that, but it releases you from all of that weight of having to carry that offense or carry. Um, I'm going to prove them or whatever. And when you said just heal, I believe that if so many of us, if we focus on that, just healing the, allowing the broken parts of me to heal, then we can show up so much better. We can show up better in relationships. We can show up better in friendships. We can show up better in our marriages because we're allowing ourselves that space to heal. And even if, you know, even if you're never able to get that apology or to reconcile with that person, when you, the other thing you said was real life, going through that bloodline, um, Cedric said that as well, seeing that they came from hurt. A lot of times when it comes to our parents, we don't realize that they're loving us to the best of their ability. Like you said, your dad was 16. What you're expecting a, a, a grown man's response from a boy. Mm. And that's normal because you're his child. But if you never go back and say, okay, wait a minute. He was a kid, just like when I was a kid. So he wasn't ready for this or he wasn't ready for that. And it gives them, it not a, erasing what was done, but it gives you a different perspective to look at it and understand it. They still needed time to grow. They still yeah. needed time to mature. They still needed time to find out who they were. You know, I think most people are self-aware. You know, there's a lot of information on the internet. And most people know this part about forgiveness, that forgiveness is not for the person, yeah, the person. it's for yourself. But you know, yet and still, you may have that individual that still struggle. Say, I know that. I know that, but it's still hard. Mm -hmm. It's still hard to release. What do we say to that person? I normally ask that person, what kind of life do you want to live? Mm. Mm. Because cool. walking in unforgiveness is almost like, putting yourself in those cryovac machines and keeping yourself stuck in one place mm. because you can never move past the point of that 
unforgiveness, that trauma, that thing that happened. Uh And in the example that you just gave, that's why you have 60, 70, 80 year old people manifesting. Mm -hmm. And if you hit a certain button, they act like a teenager. And you're like, what is wrong with you? Uh, Why are you acting like that? They're 60 years old and they're sitting over there. Somebody stomped my toe, so they're pouting. And you're like, mm-hmm. what is wrong with you? Wow. And, I, and I'm like, okay, so what happened at 16? And I will ask them, what happened at 16? Wow. And they go, well, this, 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 and this. And I said, okay, so you need to forgive everybody associated with that. I said, or you're going to keep having that response. And so that's why it's so important to move past that so that you can grow because yeah in age you matured you know you filled out all of that but mentally Mentally. Mm -hmm. you are still stuck at eight mine was eight 16 whatever age you can be a five-year-old whatever age it was you leave yourself stuck and so you've got to make the decision what kind of life do you want to build what kind of life do you want to live at the end of your days, where do you want to be? Mm-hmm. And you've got to do the work to get there because it's not given to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not something that somebody can do for you. You've got to make the decision. And, and it, it can be just one day you wake up and you just be like, it's got to be more than this. Mm-hmm. And so for whoever's listening to me, today's that day, if you want it, that there is more than this, whatever that this is that you're looking you have a six-year-old that keeps showing up in these moments when you oh, need an adult to be. Or they, or they in charge of the bank account, and when they're upset, you know, they would the spend the bill money the to money. do something else. Yeah. I mean, and, and and it's like, man, all these things are connecting, you know, mm-hmm. to this web, Cassandra, that you yeah. you just mentioned. I mean, it's like everything is connected. You know, the debt, the dysfunctional decisions we make. Mm-hmm. It's like a six a six-year-old making a grown woman decision, like getting married, (laughs) a a husband making a six-year-old husband, making a grown man decision, like head of household. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people, when they get married and they're like, he's not who he's supposed to be because he's still a little boy. There's a king. The Mm, king has to grow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like sometimes as wives, we have to be invested and God has, you know, given us. That's why we have to develop who we are so that we can help. Sometimes that's our job is to mm-hmm. help them become, make them feel safe to be the king because yeah. nobody yeah. ever allowed them. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah. gave them their authority. Yeah. And so God raises us up to say, listen, go be great. And I got you. And we stand it behind them with our hands in their back when they want to run. Mm-hmm. But, you know, nobody allowed them to be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until they met us. So. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing. Because, I mean, you're speaking my testimony. <laughs> you're speaking my testimony. When I was little uh, three-year-old cray-cray that she married, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, she was really, I mean, she, she built me up. I mean, she called me a king. When I was acting like a like a baby, you know, it's, it's it's crazy, man. This is this is this is awesome. And I think I think it's it's awesome and it's needed that we share this with the sisters because sometimes I think a lot of times we don't understand the role. It goes back to this is something you said in the very beginning when you started talking. You said many of us were prepared for the wedding day, but not for a lifetime of marriage. <laughs> and so we have these fairy tale ideas of what marriage and life as a married person, wifey or husband or gun is going to be, but not necessarily understanding the responsibilities that goes along with that. Because when you, when you do the work, especially we're talking about, you know, you work a lot with women. So we're talking about wives building. And as you build yourself first and make yourself better, then you're able to show up better and do some of the things we've talked about today. Look at a situation and say, oh, this is not about me. 
you know, you can ask yourself that question we talked about, is this me? And then you can recognize, oh, wait a minute, this is not about me. This is about that 16 year old showing up. Mm -hmm. This is about that six year old showing up. So now he needs me, like you said, to put my hand in his back and tell him you can do this, to tell mm -hmm. him I'm here with you. You're not by yourself, regardless of who walked away, I'm still here with you and vice versa. Cause sometimes we need that as well, because sometimes our husbands have matured and they see things in us that we can't see because we still have that baggage and they need to say I got you be the queen that God created you to be and and the only way that he can do that is by doing the work on himself so this is all of this is twofold this is and good. it is it's amazing it, I'm excited yeah, yeah this is good this is good we're gonna go for one more you said the first thing you said uh is this is this me the second thing you said willing to unpack what's another what's another practical step that you can give to us to help to uh, to become better the power of hush oh oh okay yeah. understand the power of your words that your words have power and sometimes you got to be very strategic with your words and sometimes to gather intel you just got to be quiet you <laughs> just have to listen you just have to let them talk talk let them talk long enough mm. and you just gather everything that you need to know but sometimes we're offended because we jump in immediately when something is said. One of the things me and my husband did, um, we, we began to say, I would say, what do you mean by that? Because I'm, I'm an author. I'm a word person. I'm very strategic. I know what, I know what stings, what don't, all of that. And he would just be saying stuff. And I'm like, that all that. and you know, he was, I, and I finally had to say, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Before I get offended, because it's making me feel some kind of way. What do you mean by that? And allow him to explain, because guess what? I was supposed to go off for no reason. Mm -hmm. We were saying the same thing. We were just seeing it from two different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Take finances. My husband is, he's the free spirit, skipping through the daisies. I'm the structure. We gonna plan, <laughs> right? And so uh, he's like, let's go, we wanna travel. And I'm like, yes, I wanna travel, but not today, right? So we're saying the same things, we just have two different perspectives. Mm -hmm. But if I never learned how to hush, if he never learned how to hush, to be able to just listen and speak the correct words in the right moment, because today may not be the day to have that conversation. I can say the right thing in the wrong moment on the wrong day or the right day and get a completely different response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. But if I wait until cooler heads prevail, then he's able to hear my heart and not my emotions. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's good. Oh man. Because when he hear my emotions, he's defensive because now he like, oh, oh God. <laughs> Cause I'm the hot head. I'm, mm -hmm. the, I'm the one that's like, listen, we gotta, ah. And I have all this energy. Normally I'm more laid back mild, but when it's there, it's there. And it's like wow. a lion. Yeah. And um, God showed me, he said, when you're like that, you have on gloves. That's what he sees. Mm -hmm. He sees somebody ready to fight. Mm. And he was like, you're not going to get anything out of him. When you come at him, he's going to come to you with a defensive posture. And because my husband is you know, the, has the patience of Job, bless his heart. <laughs> and he loves me and he was not, he's a gentleman. He would never put his hands on me or anything like that. Right. So when I come at him like that, he shuts down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn to hush. Mm. I had to understand the power of my words to build him up, to tear him down, to build my house, to, tear, to, to break everything down to the foundation. And so I had to learn how to just, Hush. <laughs> just hold it sometimes and be like lord and my prayer was in those moments for anybody that wants to know on, <laughs> my yeah. prayer in those moments was god this is a conversation we need to have i'll have it when it's time mm -hmm. make the atmosphere and the household conducive for us to talk about this and nine times out of ten he would come to me and he said babe we need to talk about that 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 it may be a week later, it may be two weeks, it may could be a few days, but he would bring it up. And if he brought it up, he was ready to hear whatever the conversation was and yeah. he could hear my heart. 
That's good. That's good. You are freeing us today yes, yes. because a lot of times, you know, it, it, and I'm sure you probably experienced this working with women. Well, if I don't say nothing, he ain't gonna ever want to talk about it. And that's not true. Sometimes we just have to wait till the right time, the right day, the right moment till the, the atmosphere is right for us to talk about it. And sometimes we don't do that because it's like, if I don't say nothing about it today, he gonna think he got away with this or he's gonna think I'm okay with this or it's never gonna get dealt with. And that's not always true. That's not always true. I mean, I know there are situations when it is, when somebody's trying to avoid and don't want to deal with it or unpack whatever it is. You just said something because you said, this is this is the dynamics of who you are and how you show up in a certain situation. And then the dynamics of who he is, is that, okay, because I'm a gentle soul, I'm just gonna be quiet and I ain't gonna say nothing. And sometimes that's what we're getting. You know, it's the, it's the way that he maintains or she maintains self-control, they just don't say anything. And we don't give time for cooler heads to prevail so that we can have the conversation. So that's good. I love it. Understanding the power of the hush. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I love the, the question. I wrote this down because I'm definitely going to add this to my bag. <laughs> is what do, what you, do you mean, mean by, by that? that? Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that is so good. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Because oftentimes... If we don't ask this question, this is a powerful question, by the way. Awesome question. Mm -hmm. if you don't ask this question, you're going to create your own narrative yeah. and create your own story. And you can be way off oh, instead of just yeah. getting the truth right then and there. But this will avoid you and keep you from creating all these stories and going around. A lot of misunderstandings. I mean, all this mm -hmm. misunderstanding. I mean, we really think about all the people. I mean, I, in our relationships, in our marriages, in our with our siblings, with our family, all these myths, I mean, just not, I mean, this question can be used with anything. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I mean, this question is, I mean, it's very helpful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. That, is yeah, that saved me a whole lot of whew, sleepless nights. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, good question. Uh, good I question. love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, Cassandra, before we go, we want you to, you tell us a little bit about wise wives build and you talked a little bit about that yourself so one thing before we go one piece of advice just one piece of advice would you give to a woman who is about to be a wife preparing for marriage what's the one piece of advice yeah. you would give to a woman that is preparing for marriage enjoy you Enjoy getting to know you. Don't be in such a hurry to become a wife mm -hmm. because sometimes we miss our personal journey trying to get to wife. And then we come into this with yeah, all this stuff. And then it's like, yeah. what in the world? Because <laughs> the first time he does something, he's going to trigger you. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, I didn't sign up for this. Mm -hmm. And in the world that we live in, you know, the, the first thing that people say is, girl, you ain't got to take that. Some things, yeah, you, you know, hey, that was, you know, that was a small print that nobody read, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> but um, to, to just enjoy your journey, really get to know you. What, what do you bring to the table? Um, what are those things you're really good at? Because I'm a firm believer that when you come, when the two are becoming one, we both bring skills to, to the table mm -hmm. and they should mm -hmm. complement one another. Where he is weak, I should be strong. Where, where I'm weak, he should be strong. And sometimes we don't tap into the strengths of one another. We focus so much on the weaknesses. We're not focusing in on what we're bringing to the table. And so understand what you're bringing into the table. If you're an encourager, em embrace that embrace the fact that you know you can pray and, and you know learn all the things that you bring so when it shows up in your relationship you know you can show up and say I got that mm -hmm. and nobody's looking for and, and you stay in your lane yeah. learn what your lane is whatever your husband is good at let him be great at that my husband listen I cook I'm the cooker in the house but my husband cleans his his family owned a cleaning business so he cleans circles around me. I don't get mad when he come in and start going behind me and clean it. Baby, be great. Go ahead. Thank <laughs> you again. <laughs> it works. But he doesn't come into the kitchen and try to tell me what to do either. Right? We that's that's our dynamic. Learn what and learn what your dynamic is. When you know what you bring to the table, you're not comparing yourself and you don't feel like I have to come into my marriage being superwoman and ask questions. Yes. yes. 
ask questions. Don't wait till you get married to now you want to ask all these questions about finances. No, ma'am. No, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah. You need to know that going in so you know what you're working with. Absolutely. Because you get tricked. <laughs> well, we're just going to fix that whenever you didn't understand they had $100,000 worth of debt. Yeah student loans or whatever the case may be, then guess what? That became yours too. The yeah. two have become one. Mm -hmm. So now you have $100,000 worth of debt. Yeah. <laughs> so ask, ask the right questions. If there's anything, and I guess you said one thing, but the, the other one is understand that when you get married, you marry their family. So if you're, if there's a, if Ooh. there's someone you're interested in, <laughs> you think he might be the one. Great. Go around his family. Look and see what they do. I, I, my, when I met my husband, his mom, she's very, um, they're older, so she's very old school. His dad, when he was still alive, she would bring his his food. He would come in. He would sit at the table. She would fix his plate. She would sit it down in front of him. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching this and I'm like, I said, is that a requirement of me? Mm. I said because uh -huh. if that's a requirement of me I'm not going to be able to do that so you might need to go ahead and think that and I was honest with him can mm -hmm. I fix my husband's plate? Of course because he mm -hmm. says it looks better if I put it on the plate but he will come into the kitchen and he will get it if I'm tired or if I'm not there he can make sure he eats and he'll fix his plate you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. it's not a requirement yeah. if mm -hmm. I do it it's great mm -hmm. but it's not a requirement of me but if I had never seen that then he could have came into the marriage with an expectation of me that I could not afford. Mm -hmm. And it could have been, you know, for some people that's, that's a deal breaker. Yeah. So we had to talk about all them deal breakers before we got married. Cause I'm like, if I can't do it for 50 years. Ain't no need to start it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I said 50 years from now, if you feel this way, I gotta be okay with that. And vice versa. I said, and if it's not, if you're not going to be okay in 50 years, you need to say something today so I can decide whether we're going to work on this or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we get into trouble is we come in and we feel like we're going to change one another after mm -hmm. I do. And that's mm -hmm. not This good. was amazing. This yes. was amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. If someone wants to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? Um, they have two places they can find me, www.wisewivesbuild.com. That's for all my ladies. But um, I am www.dcassandrawilliams.com as well for just personal victory coaching. If you're in that space where you need help unpacking, that is part of my ministry as well is to help people unpack, you know, build that life of their dreams. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. On behalf of the TMC community, we want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us today on TMC. If this is your first time, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button, turn on your notifications so you'll be notified when we upload a video every week. If you're listening on iTunes, rate the podcast and leave a review. Go ahead and head on over to our leadership podcast, Lead to Greatness, where my husband is interviewing entrepreneurs and great leaders every week. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from, from surviving, surviving to, to thriving. thriving. Bye. Bye. See, See you next, next week. week.